Okay. Um, so today, I well, first, I'm Liz Perry, and I teach 10th grade um, humanities and Spanish at High Tech High. Um, I switched it a semester. So last semester, I taught humanities. This semester, I teach Spanish. And so my project is on equity in the Spanish or in the world language classroom. Um, so I'm going to present a little bit of information on what I did. Um, so if you want to go to that first slide there. Um, my question is um, how this new structure I implemented would help me meet the diverse learning needs of a, uh, a diverse group of students in a non-track world language class. So to give you a little bit of context at High Tech High, we don't track in any class or at any level. Um, so I have students in my Spanish class that have never learned a word of Spanish in their life to native speakers in the very same class. Um, so this is my second year of, of providing this type of instruction, and last year I found that it was a bit challenging at times to really make sure that everyone was getting the level of challenge that was appropriate for them, and that I was um, providing uh, equal instruction to each level, given that they all had very different needs. So um, that was what I wanted to look at, and I created a structure for this year called Las Olympiadas, which is the Olympics, in which students engaged in a self-paced, um, multi-level um, curriculum, uh, and I wanted to see how that helped me meet the needs of my students. So um, first, as I mentioned on track classes, many of those needs, I provided the three different things. I differentiated instruction, so um, students got to select based on their prior level of experience with Spanish what level they would start at, um, and then they got to self-pace their learning through uh, various levels and various, um, I guess, uh, themes of instruction um, so that everyone could start where they felt comfortable and received instruction that uh, was at their level and was able to uh, address their needs. Um, it was also, I tried to differentiate assessment types to help um, everyone be assessed in a way that uh, reflected their best, um, how they were able to represent their learning best. Um, and so we had uh, oral assessments Written, in, written assessments, um, and then projects that they would engage in. So I got to see three different types of uh, assessment formats. Okay, this is a little chart that shows there's a way for students to measure their progress. So Las Olimpiadas, they would receive after progressing through a particular level, a bronze medal, a silver medal, or a gold medal. The uh, concept was that I really wanted everyone to, I set the floor, so everyone had to move through two levels of instruction. So it could be level one and level two, or level two and level three, or level three and three honors. Um, but everyone had to move through two, but anyone that moved through two could go well beyond that. So I have students who are really eager to, to learn Spanish, and they didn't have to stay on the same pace as everyone else in the class. They could move through the content, show that they've mastered that, and move on um, at their own pace. Um, to measure the effectiveness of this system, I use student surveys, observations um, in class, and I used uh, observations from my mentor teacher and collegial coach, so another uh, student or another teacher in the school who would come in and observe me. It's a format that we have at High Tech High to uh, support teachers and, and, and receive feedback from other teachers. Um, and so when I was basically the format within the class, I would have students rotate. So each day, I would teach a small focused lesson to a particular group. Another group would work, at, work on practice work, so written work, and a third group would work on Rosetta Stone. Uh, Rosetta Stone I'd never used before, but a lot of the language teachers here use it as a uh, support to the, to the curriculum. Um, students got to choose basically where they started in Rosetta Stone, and those who had, um, or were already native Spanish speakers or were at a high level of proficiency, um, actually got to learn a third language, and then we used that third language to uh, do language comparison, so really looking at the structure of language and how um, they relate or are, are different from one another, so that they could strengthen uh, their concepts of, of language in general. Um, and then I also conducted informal student interviews. Uh, overall, I think that this format was pretty effective. Um, I heard more positive feedback, I saw more kids engaged, and I didn't feel like I was um, really scrambling to meet everyone's needs as often. If somebody had finished something, it was clear to them what they needed to move on to next, um, so that there was less uh, idle time in which students were awaiting instruction or uh, uncertain how they would move forward in their um, acquisition of, of Spanish. 
Um, I, these are a couple uh, quotes from students. One said that it, they like that it keeps their mind always on Spanish. So there's something, um, you know, different ways of uh, approaching Spanish, but there was always a focus on, on the content itself. Another student said that they like that it's self-paced and that it builds on earlier lessons. So it is um, sequential and that um, students aren't expected to know something that they haven't been exposed to previously um, and that it builds on it itself. So um, if a student learns a concept, they'll see that throughout the, the subsequent lessons. Another student said, I like how everyone gets the same amount of learning, which was really the key of what I wanted to see in this um, system, was that students from all levels would feel like they were benefiting. Um, in the past, I've heard native Spanish speakers say, I already speak Spanish, I don't want to learn Spanish in, you know, in class because it's something that I already do. Um, so I was able to really target the areas that uh, native Spanish speakers wanted to focus on, which is reading and writing. Um, and then they also uh, were able to do more advanced projects in Spanish that some of the other students might not have been able to do at that level, um, and they were able to share them with uh, all of their classmates. And a fourth person said that it's very organized and there's a clear, there are clear and set times to get everything done. Um, when I get into what changes I would make, this is maybe something that I would, I would aim to improve, but I'm glad that uh, at least it was clear to uh, many students what was, um, what was expected of them and what uh, was hoped for them to, to accomplish. Right? Okay, um, what I thought was interesting, however, was that students really differed on their perspective and what was effective. And this is where I think that the differentiated, differentiated instruction played in. I had these uh, small focus lessons, Rosetta Stone, and um, student individual practice. And it, when I surveyed them on what they felt was most effective, it was really split into thirds. So a third thought that the lessons were most effective, a third thought that Rosetta Stone was most effective, and a third thought that the, pre the written practice was most effective. And then same for least effective. So really it showed that students really had very different taste in learning styles and they had different preferences for how they were um, uh, able to learn this content. Um, and that even though some were asked, for example, to, everyone was asked to do some Rosetta Stone, they were all exposed to different ways of instruction so that they weren't stuck with just one that maybe didn't fit their learning style as well as another one did. Okay. Um, so some of the challenges with this, and there were, there were many, I took a lot of notes because I do hope to use this system or a modified version of the system in the future. Um, one thing was uh, just keeping um, all of the components up to date. So I was basically creating these structured lessons for four different levels of Spanish at the same time. And needless to say, I was a little bit overwhelmed this semester. Um, but I think that uh, in the future, having a lot of those things in place already will be beneficial. Um, that I'll be able to not only uh, create them, but to, to polish them and make them the most effective as possible. Another thing that I found challenging was being able to use all the different types of assessments. At times I'd be, you know, I'd be torn in many different directions and I would have a hard time doing the oral assessments at the time that they were most needed, so they were a week late at times or, um, so really structuring in the time to uh, ensure that I have those assessments. Um, other things like measuring how I did Rosetta Stone, I would change those. Um, Structure so a lot of structural changes I would make. Um, the other thing that I found was that not all students do super well with a self-paced system. Um, even with checks mid-semester and checks later in the semester, um, a lot of students um, need more check-ins with the teacher, and so that's something that I'll do more often next year um, to support those students who need that structure. Um, and in terms of Spanish three honors. This differentiation is just that a lot of the, the structures in those lessons were the same, and so I'd like to give them more exposure to different, different lessons. Okay. Um, will I do this again? I definitely will. Uh, these are all just different changes that I would make in terms of making it digital, providing different assessments. Um, I did require that all students pass with 80% on their exams, or they must retake them, uh, because I wanted mastery was really my focus, and not just um, getting through and, and getting low grades. Um, so I might modify how I implement that um, just to allow students to move forward or demonstrate their knowledge in a different way other than me taking an exam. Um, as I said, provide more structure and check-ins. Um, and these are mentioned. So, is that the sixth? I think so, 
Yeah. Um, so overall, uh, I think that this type of instruction is important to uh, think about how we differentiate for our students, um, what the most effective way is to, to get all of our students engaged and to find appropriate challenge levels. And so that will continue to be a focus of mine as I uh, move into next year. Uh, questions? What do you mean digitize? You're gonna like you have all this work done that's not digital. What are you gonna do? Um, probably just act, I, it depends on what I'm able to do. Um, I would like to have everything in folders in kind of a system online. So if people are uncertain oh, what's see. next or they can't find the sheets or they're not certain, print it out. It was really tough for me to um, have them all in folders, and then they get mixed up. Yeah, right. And so it's easier for me to explain to you because you see the system, but yeah. they had folders of different content, and they would get shuffled, so. Excellent job, Liz. Yeah. Oh, I can take the, the